everybody, this is uh, chapter eight, section seven. This is the end of the chapter, or at least as far as we would like to go with it. Um, this is going to kind of be a little uh, wrap up of almost everything we've done in this chapter. So uh, really important to take good notes. Um, I, I tend to go kind of fast when I'm doing the video. So if I'm going too fast, just hit pause and get caught up with your notes and then make sure you get back um, to where we're at. Okay. All right, so this first set, uh, a perfect square trinomial. So if we could write this down, and we'll go ahead and look at the, the definition. Okay. We've actually uh, have done this. Uh, it's just kind of like a little uh, prelude to what we're going to do the rest of the section. Okay. So uh, if you had something like x plus 4, if you remember, uh, from section five, I believe it was that you would go ahead and section five or four, you would go ahead and write it twice. That's kind of what, it, what that's telling me to do. And then I can go ahead and either foil it or I could use the boxes. Okay. To be able to simplify it. So they, you know, they give you this, this is what you'd see in a textbook, and then they give you this. And, you know, that's, you should be able to do that too, just because there's letters doesn't mean that the rules change, okay? If I foil this, because I have enough room for that, remember it's x times x is x squared, x times 4 is 4x, four, 4 times x is 4x, four, and then 4 times 4 is 16. Typically, I should be able to put those together if the variables and powers are the same, and they are. They both have powers of 1. So I should be able to get that simple, simplified down to that. Okay? So just a little bit of review. Now, when we're factoring, though, we get stuff like this, a difference of perfect squares. Okay? And let, this is something that um, really kind of gets kids... Um, and we just need to understand what what this term really means. Okay, we got we got this term. Sorry, we got this term here. We got to know what what the words mathematically mean. Difference of squares. And so it really says two perfect squares. Okay, so if you want to write that uh, title down, difference of difference of squares. I usually throw in the word perfect with that too. So difference of perfect squares. Is two perfect squares being subtracted and can be factored. So remember, difference here means to subtract. So that's where that's come in. You'll notice there's just two terms. So this is a binomial. And in the definition, it says two perfect squares. Now, let's let's take a let's stop for a second and talk about what is a perfect square. The definition of a perfect square is a number times itself has a product that is perfect. Okay, well, what does that mean? It means that if you've seen the symbol before, I could take the square root of it, and I'm looking for a number that when I multiply it to itself, I get the square root of that number. So that would be 6. Okay, just 1 6. Okay. I know it's 6 times 6 gives me 36. But the square root of 36 is 6, okay? Let's, and let's just kind of let's go away from the number we're using in the problem. So I'll kind of go over a list of numbers here. 16 is a perfect square because um, I know that I can go 8 times 2 or even 1 times 16 gives me 16. But 4 times 4 gives me 16. So 16 is a perfect square. Because you can take the square root of it and you get 4. Okay? Uh, 100 is another example. Okay, I could go 25 times 4, 50 times 2, but 10 times 10 gives me 100. So 100 is a perfect square and the square root of that is 10. Okay? So we're looking at this, this number here. Is there a number that when you multiply it to itself gives me that product? Okay? So we're going to kind of get the, some math skills that you're going to have to know and be able to uh, figure those out, okay? Usually in class, 
uh, when we do this, and I'll, I'll just kind of do it really fast for you. Uh, we go through a list of perfect squares. One is actually a perfect square because one times one gives me one. Okay. Uh, four is a perfect square because it's two times two. Nine is perfect because it's three times three. I did four times four gave us sixteen, and five times five is twenty-five. We just looked at six times six, and so on. Okay. And you would need to know this list. You know, is 36 a perfect square? Is 49 a perfect square? Well, yes, it is because it's 7 times 7. Okay, so you, we really got to understand these numbers and we got to understand how, how we, what number I can multiply to itself to get it. All right, not all numbers are perfect squares. Okay, like 63 is not a perfect square. The only way I can get it is 9 times 7 or 21 times 3 or 1 times 63. So all those numbers were different from each other, okay? But 64 is perfect because it's 8 times 8. So you just, we it's something that you have to have a good understanding of mathematically. And, and when I usually do this, you know, in class, I'll write this list all the way to about 15 times 15. That's kind of about the limit that we use. We do use some ones that get bigger than this. But 15 times 15 gives me 225. So 225 is perfect. Okay. So about up to that point, you know, there's some other ones we can do. But your calculator can do this for you, too. There's a button on there. Uh, you would have to hit the second function button. You find a button that had x squared on it, but right above it is this symbol. So you want to hit second function, hit this button, uh, put in your number, whatever it might be, and then hit equals, and it'll give you. It'll either give you the, you know, the number, the perfect square, like 15, or it would give you a decimal answer because, like 63, I showed you before, it comes out to be like 7.9 on your calculator. Okay. So just a little background for you there uh, as we get into this, okay? Okay, we're going to go ahead and factor the following, and we're going to um, always, when you factor stuff, always look for a GCF first, because the way that we factor stuff, if you don't take out a GCF, you're not going to get it to factor properly. So we always look for a GCF. Remember, that's something I could take out of each term here. And looking at that, I can't. I can take something out of 16 and 64, but I can't take something out of k squared that's the same. Okay, so remember, we're going to go ahead and draw our x. I'm going to put a 1 here since there's no number. Multiply it to the back. Take the middle number, 16, put it at the bottom. And since both of these are positive, I'll do that just to remind myself. And what multiplies to 64 and adds up to 16. So I think I said this earlier that you really got to have good uh, multiplication skills to be able to be good at this. Um, I believe that 8 times 8 gets me 64 and it adds up to 16. Okay. So remember then I could take my parentheses. I'll take the k squared and split it up. And then I take these two numbers that are on the sides. They become my factors. Okay, so there it is, factored. But I can rewrite this now. Since they're both exactly the same, I can rewrite it like this. And that's what we really want you to be able to see and be able to do. If they're both, both factors are the same. Remember, these, these are factors. They multiply together. You know, I foil it or box it. And I get I get what I started with, okay. But I can rewrite it like this since they're both the same. <coughs> okay. Let me do uh, this one over here with you. Um, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and draw my x. There's a, a one right here. So remember, one times sixteen is here, and the middle number is negative eight. If you remember back to uh, what we did uh, in factoring. We're going to go ahead, uh, if the signs are a minus first and a plus second, both of these would have to be negatives. I asked you to kind of, you know, memorize that, remember it. This really just helps 
limit to how much I have to think. Okay? What two numbers multiply to 16 and they add up to negative 8? Well, um, if I have a negative times a negative, it's going to give me a positive 16. And I add those two negative numbers together, I get the negative 8 on the bottom. Okay? Since that leading coefficient was a 1, that means I'm going to take the W squared and just split it in half. Or not split it in half, sorry. Don't, don't remember that. I'm going to split it apart. And then I'm going to take the two uh, values that I have on the side. And there's my factoring. And I look at it. Hey, I go, they're both the same, so I can rewrite it like this. It is important that you rewrite it. Uh, I would mark it wrong on a test if you didn't. But sometimes on a test, it's multiple choice. You, you, might not, not, you might not see this as the answer. You'll see this. And you just need to understand what that means. Okay? All right, so let's do this. Uh, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and do this one on your own. It's similar to the one we just did. Uh, and I'm talking about the signs that you have. And then I'm going to do uh, the other one uh, with you, the last one. Okay? So go ahead and hit pause. Uh, do, this, do this one right here that I underlined. And then I'll, I'm going to go ahead and put up the solution. Okay. Okay, so I multiply the front number to the back number, and that gives me uh, the top of the x. I take the middle number and put it at the bottom. And then because I recognize that it was minus and then plus, that both of these had to be negatives. So what multiplies to 36, and they also add up to 12. So when I was a kid, you know, my teacher would make us do this off to the side. We'd go through all the different possibilities of getting 36. Okay. And we kind of already had this, this signage thing going on. So, you know, that, I know they multiplied at 36, but what do they add up to? Well, this is negative 37. This is negative 20, negative 15, negative 13, negative 12. That's what I'm looking for because that's what I had on the bottom. But we didn't use the X. So we kind of had to do this all the time. And that wasn't a whole lot of fun. Okay. So... You know, this X factoring thing is really cool. I wish I had had it when I was a kid. Okay. So 6 times 6 for my list there is what works. Um, that leading coefficient, once again, was a 1. So I'm going to take the X squared and split it apart. And now I'm going to take the two numbers off the side. Okay. So I'm going to get X minus 6 squared. Now, I, these three problems that we did, pretty straightforward, especially when the leading coefficients are one. And I think that some of you guys that are, are pretty quick with math, you might be able to see that you can do this without doing the x and factoring it, whatever. But that really comes from you being good at multiplication and also recognizing uh, perfect squares. Uh, that's just something that some of us can get a, a quick handle on. And, we can maybe take a couple shortcuts to get that. The rest of us, though, you know, I wasn't I wasn't that quick when I was doing this uh, in high school. Um, I had to do a lot of the work, okay. But I know that I got better. The more that I did it, the better I got, and then the easier it became. Okay. All right. So what I want to just mention right here: this leading coefficient of perfect square. I can get two times two. The last term is a perfect square, three times three, and this is a question that you're really going to have to you're going to have to get a lot. Okay, you're going or you're going to have to be able to do it a lot. The, the ones with the one in front of it is just kind of like baby steps. Here you go, but this is more the what you're really going to have to be good at. Okay, once again, if I go back to what we were warned about before, though, don't forget to check for a GCF first. So I would. Especially when I get a leading coefficient that's bigger than one, I'd really want to do that. But looking at that, there's nothing that goes into four and 12 and nine. Four goes into 12, and three goes into nine, and three goes into 12, but no, there's nothing that goes into four and to nine. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and do what we're supposed to do. Four times nine is 36. Uh, the middle number is 12. 
since both the signs in the problem are positive, these should be positive. What multiplies to 36 and adds up to 12 is 6 and 6, okay? Now remember the leading coefficient is bigger than 1, and we kind of taught you guys then to go ahead and do the box, okay? So we're going to take the, the first term, 4x squared, put it here. We're going to take the last term, 9, put it here. We're going to take these guys off to the side. Uh, they're on the side. We're going to add the uh, variable to it. And now we're going to GCF the box, OK? So kind of like to go straight down first. What, what can I take out of both? Uh, the 4 and the 6, I could take a 2 out. And I could take out a power of x. The 6 and the 9, I could take out a 3. I can't take out an x because the 9 doesn't have a variable with it, okay? So now I'm going to go sideways. What can I take out of those two? The 4 and the 6, I could take out a 2. And the x, uh, I could take out a power of x from each one. Going through the bottom now, um, looking at the 6 and the 9, I could take out a 3. But once again, the 9 doesn't have, um, does not have uh, an x attached to it, okay? So there are my two factors. They're, they're both the same. Then I'm just going to do it the long way. I can write it out like this. But they're both the same, so I could write it as one uh, statement, if you want to call it that. All right? So there you go. Now, when you get really good at this, and you know, at some point you will, Trust me, if you put in the effort and the time, you'll get good at this. That's perfect. Well, what's the square root of it? 2x. Okay, because remember, x squared is really x times x. So the square root of x squared is x. So that follows the definition of what's a perfect square. This is a perfect square. What is it? It's 3. Okay, what is 2 times 3? 6. And I double it. What do you get? 12. Why did I double it? Because I would have, I need two factors. So I could do it that way, and I could do that in my head, and I could do it quick, but that comes from a lot of experience, okay? All right. So my, my really my biggest comment here is try it. Work out hard at it. If you get stuck, ask for help, okay? Why don't you go ahead and write these uh, four down, please? And we're going to factor it, okay? So remember, if it's if it's just two terms, then I'm thinking, and it's subtraction. That's called a difference of perfect squares. Is x squared perfect? Yes, it is. So I could just go ahead and go x and x. Is 81 perfect? Well, if you know your list, it is. It's 9 times 9. And you'll notice that there's not a middle term. <clears throat> we don't write math like this. Oops, hold on. We don't write math like that. We don't put 0x because that really doesn't exist, okay? So that, but the, technically that's the middle term. So the way I, I alleviate that or dismiss the middle term is having opposite signs in front of my perfect square, okay? <laughs> so let's do this one really quick. Is 9 perfect? Yes, it is. What is it? It's 3 times 3, okay? Is x squared perfect? Yes, it is. It's x times x, okay? Is 25 perfect? Yes, it is. It's 5 times 5. So I'm just taking my time. I'm not rushing this. And I'm just kind of talking through it. And I had to know my list. And then just so that because it's just two terms subtracting, I'm going to have different signs. It does not matter where, where you put the, the minus and the plus sign. They can be flopped, okay? But that's what I'm going to get. All right, so I'm going to let you guys do these two. Uh, you know, uh, hit pause and then try it, and I'll, I'll be doing the solution, and then you could hit play again and see how you did, okay? All right. Y squared is perfect. It's Y times Y. 49 is perfect. It's 7 times 7. And because it's a difference of perfect squares, I have different signs.
Is 49 perfect? Yes, it is. It's 7 times 7. Is C squared perfect? Yes, it is. It's C times C. Is 1 perfect? Yeah, it's 1 times 1. We forget about that. Okay, that's still a perfect square. And because I don't have a middle term and it's a difference of perfect squares, I have different signs. Okay? All right. So really, you know, uh, these these two on the left-hand side, you know, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. The two on the right, you got to think a little bit, and you just got to know your list of perfect squares. Okay? And talk it out like I did. Okay? Just talk to yourself. Is this perfect? Is that perfect? Is this perfect? Do different signs. You're done. These, to me, and I don't, I don't want to sound like you got an ego, but these questions really, with the definition you have of them, and you know in your list, these are like the easiest questions I can imagine, and especially for this chapter. And kids really struggle with it, and I'm, I'm just I'm not sure why. So I think it's really important that you have this list of perfect square numbers in your head and, and you know so on and, and know what the square root of it is okay if you guys can get this it's this stuff is so easy okay all right here we go Oops, I think I missed something here oh nope, that's it all right, so uh, this this section two has lots of practice in the classwork. Uh, just really important that you uh, do it. You've got questions asked. Uh, I think this section is really it can be easy, but you have to have some knowledge of perfect squares and then what their square roots are. Okay. All right. Have a good one. If you need anything, please get a hold of me, and uh, we can get stuff fixed. Take care.